Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for attending the session. Now, uh, we all know that 2020 marked the outbreak of COVID-19 worldwide. Uh, for us in Lebanon, it was more than that. <coughs> it was more than one crisis. Uh, on, on October, when, when I last came back from uh, IFLA, from Czech Republic, a few days after that, on October 17, uh, some civil unrest uh, erupted in the country. People were uh, protesting against uh, the government who took a decision to uh, uh, impose taxes on uh, VOP messages like WhatsApp, on gasoline, on tobacco, and so on. This was the start of uh, a big economic crisis. And this economic crisis had a big impact on libraries. Now, after that, of course, in March, uh, we had the start of COVID-19 pandemic. The government imposed uh, complete lockdowns. And then uh, later on, it eased a little bit uh, the restrictions on uh, the COVID pandemic. On August 4, a big explosion hit the country. It hit the Beirut area specifically, and this added to the already a very weak economic situation we had in the country. So what's the situation currently? Uh, how did we manage in libraries? What was the effect of the crisis we, we got in Lebanon on libraries and specifically on interlibrary loan services? So the Lebanese economic crisis, it was described by the World Bank as the world's worst crisis in 150 years. The Lebanese pound lost about 90% of its value. The inflation averaged around 168%. Uh, 74% of the population are at the poverty line. Uh, I believe by now it's even more than 30% unemployment rate. And the minimum monthly wage decreased from $440 to below $30. So this is currently the situation. This is the inflation rate. Uh, in order for you to get the idea about uh, the economic situation, pre-Saura, pre-revolution, uh, the exchange rate to the dollar, it was 1,500 Lebanese pounds for $1. When we did the presentation end of July, it was around 35,000. Today, it hits 40,000. So, uh, and for you also to understand uh, the situation in the Lebanese banks and how it affects libraries. In Lebanon, you can uh, have both uh, accounts in both currencies, one account in US dollars and an account in Lebanese pounds. And then, of course, uh, came the pandemic, and uh, this, this added to the already weak economic situation. The explosion that happened in the country, it killed around two th uh, 218 people. It damaged around uh, 77,000 apartments, it injured 7,000 people, and it displaced 300,000. The cost of damaged material is even more than this image. It's, it reached now more than $5 billion. So it was this explosion was, uh, the, uh, it took place due to 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate that was placed and, this, and left at the, air, at the Beirut port since 2013, lacking any safety measures. This damaged building up to 20 kilometers, yani over half of the city. It rendered three unfunctional hospitals and six severely damaged. We had 170 schools and 19 libraries in Beirut severely damaged. Those are pictures of some uh, damaged libraries. This is the National Library. This is one of the public libraries. 
and this is the Oriental Institute of Beirut Library, the reading area. So what are the effects of crises on library, on library acquisition specifically? First, the banks stopped providing US dollars. We as libraries, when we need to purchase uh, materials, be it books uh, or ILL requests, you need to use uh, you need to use US dollars. How can I pay you know, foreigners with the Lebanese currency? You cannot pay with the Lebanese currency. The banks would no longer wire money or allow credit card usage until today. We cannot wire money and we cannot use any credit cards, any local credit cards to purchase materials. Of course, the currency devaluation and inflation all of this led to a huge decrease in the library budget. So what, what we had to do at the beginning is first, databases cancellation. What are the databases? What are the resources we can do without? And uh, acquisitions, sometimes acquisitions suspension, complete suspension. So this, all of this led to a huge increase in ILL request. We had to rely on interlibrary loan to replace uh, the material that we had to cancel. Now I will leave the floor for my colleague uh, to explain the strategy we have used uh, to collect data. Okay, thank you, Carla. I guess you reflected the image very well. So uh, we sent a self-administered questionnaire to library. Li it's working. Can you hear me? Okay. To librarians or libraries who have interlibrary loan departments, those are around 10 or a little bit more libraries, and we have a consortium with each other, to see what, what were the effects of uh, the crisis or the, all the crisis on interlibrary loan, and what, what were the solutions. So the questions are, what are the effects of the crisis, and what solutions were implemented to alleviate the issuing problems? As I told uh, before, uh, the methodology is a self-administered questionnaire was sent to nine academic libraries uh, that offer interlibrary loan, and we had uh, eight responses. We used the Microsoft Forms to send the questionnaire, and it is a semi-quantitative uh, approach uh, to analyze. We use the semi-quantitative approach to analyze uh, the responses, uh, and also we used the short answer format to know better about their ideas. So uh, we want them to, to tell us more. So we, we use the short answer format to allow response, uh, responders to give additional details. Uh, the first point is resource sharing and the pandemic. So two libraries, they responded, they, they operated solely using their electronic resources. Uh, so the pandemic didn't significant, significantly affect their resource sharing activities. Six libraries reported being affected by the uh, pandemic. One library, only one library remained open <coughs> with reduced circulation staff, skeleton, uh, to process books and scanning material. However, there was a significant decrease in in-person borrowing transactions. And of course, you know, the, this library is the American University of Beirut because they work under severe conditions. <laughs> All the other libraries stopped working. Uh, second, resource sharing and the Beirut explosion. How, what was the effect of uh, the Beirut explosion on resource sharing? Four libraries were lo located near the Beirut, in the Be Beirut area, actually. They had severe interruption in sharing the print materials, mainly the print materials. And also because uh, the country imposed two, two weeks to, uh, for, for, like, to help for rescue, to rescue people and to... to a state of emergency uh, lockdown. So all the, uh, the efforts were, were geared toward uh, rescue efforts. Four libraries outside Beirut area responded that they were not affected uh, by the explosion, but there was some delays in sending and receiving requests, especially uh, outside Lebanon. Uh, resource sharing and the Lebanese economic crisis, six libraries reported being affected in the acquisitions of resources including cancellation of some databases and some people, they canceled the most of their databases, some libraries, and a huge decrease in uh, acquisition of books. Uh, we are one of the library who stopped, who totally stopped books acquisitions for two years. Now we, we started again. 
because not because we don't want to buy books, but because we didn't have a mean to buy the book. We didn't. Ha we can. Our money is uh, was kidnapped. They were in the banks, and you can you cannot use them. We ca we cannot wire money. We cannot use credit cards. So we were trying to find a solution for this, and now we we have started again to to purchase books. One out of the six library reported complete suspensions. Maybe this is us. Uh, the number of interlibrary loan, of course, increased significantly because people want uh, research materials, and especially in libraries that stopped a lot of subscription-based database. They, they, they uh, ask more for, for ILL requests. And two libraries indicated that they were not affected by the economic crisis, but I don't know how. This is the resp response. Totally uh, depended on the online. They uh, reported they were not if affected by the economic crisis. Can you no, <laughs> <laughs> because you said it's going to be anonymous. So, uh, IFLA received received project and Lebanese libraries. In 2020, uh, we organized a webinar to introduce Lebanese libraries to the project. And many of them became uh, partners in the LMS project now. We have Carla, Ilham. So uh, we were very active, but from our side of the world, we are very small. So active for us is like sending some requests and receiving some requests. But we were, we were active, actually. Uh, the American University of Beirut is the one who uh, requested the more articles. We supplied more than we requested. Uh, only one library didn't attend the webinar, so we don't have feedback from them. Uh, and five libraries were reported using the services either as volunteers or requesters. Uh, one of them is not with us now, uh, the USG. They were active also in, in, in requesting and, okay. Also, uh, some libraries benefited from the OCLC in new profiled groups that was created, they were created during the pandemic. Uh, OCLC created some groups to, to help uh, facilitate resource sharing. ACOV represent libraries providing articles requests from physical as well as from electronic collections. BCOV represent libraries providing complete ebooks as copy requests. And CCOV represent libraries providing materials from their physical collection only. Uh, okay. Only three libraries reported being subscribed to OCLC, and Peter, you should consider this because you are very expensive. <laughs> 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 so only three libraries in Lebanon have a subscription to OCLC resource sharing uh, due to high subscription cost. <laughs> so it's not feasible for uh, libraries that have very uh, few requests to subscribe to OCLC. While in the case of the American University of Beirut, they receive uh, how much? 4,000 requests per month? No. <laughs> per year. Yeah. yeah. So th it is feasible for them to, to, uh, to subscribe. But yeah. some other libraries, they only send and receive 10 or 20 requests per month. Okay? And this is, uh, to be honest, this is not only the problem with OCLC. Even in if IFLA subscription is expensive for some libraries around the world. So we should review the scheme of payment, I guess. Uh, out of the three libraries, two of them reported using the profile groups created by OCLC. Uh, ability to borrow complete ebooks. Uh, uh, this is only one library reported uh, using uh, HACI Trust em Emergency Temporary Access Service. Uh, if you don't know about HACI Trust uh, Emergency Temporary Access Service, HACI Trust provided a service to, to provide the, uh, the electronic copy of the book if you have it as a library. So if you have a physical copy of the book, but you cannot lend it because of the uh, pandemic, you can uh, lend the uh, electronic copy provided by Hatsi Trust. Only one library in Lebanon uh, used this service. Uh, okay, change in number of ILL requests. The majority of libraries that were uh, questioned uh, reported an increase in the number of requests due, of course, to the decrease in the budget of uh, books acquisitions and for el electronic re resources. And also because of the uh, lockdowns or cure few imposed by the governments worldwide that contributed to increasing the number of requests of electronic resources. Only two libraries reported stability in the on the number of interlibrary loan requests. Uh, other means for requesting ILL, so the unofficial, the unofficial uh, routes were listservs. 
So four libraries depended heavily on the LITS consortium. Four libraries, they only used the local consortium to share resources. So they were satisfied with uh, the local uh, collection. Uh, LITS is the Lebanese consortium for interlibrary loan. So we have a small consortium to share uh, resources. One of these libraries also used received and relied on the also used received and relied also on the list serves that are available worldwide. Two libraries reported that they, they depended on international list serves to, fulfil to fulfill their request, and two libraries did not respond to this question. Now I will leave uh, the mic to uh, Carla to describe the case of the American University of Beirut. Yes, as um, at AUB, we take daily statistics for ILL to assess in order to see what we can do, how we can improve the services. Uh, it is very important to note that we did not uh, stop, we, we had to do some databases cancellations, but we provided most of the requested materials by our users. So the users did not feel that there is anything wrong going on. Uh, when it comes to ILL. Uh, we had, I, I compiled statistics before uh, the revolution, which means before June 2020, before the banks uh, stopped uh, wiring the money and uh, before uh, also prior to not being able to use the credit cards. And then I compiled just uh, statistics between June 2020 and June 2022 to analyze the services to show how received, how OCLC, uh, the listserv, the help of colleagues, open access, healthy trust, all of these efforts, how did they help such um, a weak country in uh, this situation? And what was uh, the effect of this on the future? What did we do and uh, what are we planning on doing? So. Uh, AUB received uh, from IFLA around uh, 1,000 articles out of 1,500 requested. Uh, we are an uh, associated members of received. We are still using received and we will keep on uh, depending on received. We hope to be uh, much more involved in lending uh, because here another major issue uh, in Lebanon, we are losing lots of staff due to the situation, we are losing lots of staff and we have less and less staff. We were 13 at the access services department, we are now seven. And the services <laughs> did not uh, get uh, worse, so <laughs> we kept the same quality with much less staff. Uh, we received also around 1,000 articles uh, from OCLC free of charge. We used uh, the new profiled groups, and this helped us a lot. Now we return to using the regular profiled groups like Amical, Elvis, uh, all those uh, groups that really uh, also help uh, users uh, free of charge. So we start with the free of charge. If we cannot get it free of charge, we, uh, we try to uh, see if we can pay for it. Uh, of course, we used also, uh, we cannot forget that the academic publishers and vendors made a huge amount uh, of materials available free of charge uh, to support uh, institutions moving towards uh, teaching and learning online and uh, the help of colleagues. Uh, we, as uh, AUB, we were able to purchase article requests through OCLC, IFM, and using some document supply providers such as Subitu and NLM. Uh, we were able to change the method of payment from credit card to transfers fra from international banks. Now I want to here state one very important thing. We are in this library because we have an office in New York. We have uh, money outside Lebanon. It's not big because we get, we get the tuition from students inside Lebanon. So we were able, we have a little bit of money. We were able to use this little bit of money in order to fill in the gap and get uh, the materials we need. Uh, so definitely we try to avoid uh, paying for the DS requests because uh, the situation is getting even worse. 
we were able to get 35% uh, of our requests through OCLC, 30% through received, 33% through the help of colleagues, open access and uh, vendors, and we paid only for 2% of the requests uh, from uh, our money, which is outside Lebanon. Uh, this is the comparison pre- and post-crisis. Before, we used to spend around $4,000 a year for uh, requesting articles and book loans. Now, we are uh, spending $500. Even last, uh, this year, it was $168. So the cost dropped by around 95%. This is the graph. This is pre, and this is during and post crisis. Uh, now, when it comes to books, we have used the, because we are members in Hathi Trust, we have used the Emergency Temporary Access Service Program from Hathi Trust. Uh, you, uh, you, you should, what are the rules? You should possess a copy of the print book you are lending, or copies. Uh, you have to agree not to lend the print copy while you are lending uh, the electronic copy. Access is view mode only, which sometimes the user doesn't like it when they cannot download the PDF, but uh, it was useful at that time where everyone has to be confined. And the access is based on one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, this is the statistics for uh, the loan, the ETAS loan. At the beginning in 2020, from May 2020 until December 2020, uh, uh, our users almost used the two thirds of the total of the total uh, uh, ETAS loan for the period where it was still active. Why is that? Although AB was opened, we, we rarely closed. When we had to close, we closed. We were open with two staff members just for scanning articles to help our users, uh, to help anyone who is asking, not only the AB users. Uh, people were afraid at the beginning, you know, when COVID uh, uh, took place and then the government will fine you if you, uh, if you pass by on the street. So first as fear of a new virus, you don't know what's this virus, and then also, uh, due to uh, the government lockdown and the measures taken in order to contain the virus. In 2021, after um, the population got uh, the vaccine, it was, uh, people were more relaxed. Uh, the ETAS loan dropped around by 50% as users started using the curbside pickup uh, that we have set up for them. In 2022, only one user <laughs> used the uh, ETAS loan, and um, which also the ETAS war has been suspended on uh, May 31st, 2022. So, as much as crises represent danger, they can also be a vehicle for change, right? Received, we, we highly believe in received. Yani without received, without OCLC, without the Open Access Initiative and Hathi Trust and all of these efforts, we wouldn't have been able to keep the services of ILL running in such a place, in such conditions, and even in the future. If we have to go back and pay the amounts you used to pay, we cannot afford it. We cannot do it. Now, we uh, as AUB, since COVID, we decided that we will not charge anyone for IRL. We don't charge. Even on OCLC, when people charge us, we're not charging anyone. We are providing materials free of charge. And I believe that this should be the future. It should be free interlibrary loan. There is one issue with people requesting material, physical material. In Lebanon, I think it's different than other countries. When we send the books, we pay. And when we receive the books, we pay sometimes charges higher than the book cost. Upon receivers, so also we have to pay. 
So we rarely, <laughs> we rarely lend physical material. Sometimes we are doing it, you know, just because if the book is not available in any other library and if it's not out of copyright, we are doing it, but we cannot not to charge. <laughs> Um, I, I hope and I believe that the controlled digital lending will be the future of lending books. We have to be more active in uh, uh, negotiating uh, the licenses uh, when we sign them. This is to be able to lend more materials uh, for others uh, uh, free of charge. Thank you.